So we've been looking at some examples where a set V that described is not a vector space. So I want to introduce you to our first, our first example of something that is a vector space. And so this is a, a unique case. We have polynomials as vector spaces. And so we denote a polynomial here as double barred P sub N. And this is a vector space described by little p of t is equal to a naught plus a sub 1 t to the first plus a squared times t squared, excuse me, a sub 2 times t squared, and this continues, la la la, all the way. We've got some a sub n minus 1 times t to the n minus 1 plus a sub n times t to the n. And this looks familiar. This looks like a linear combination. So let's describe what do these things mean. And a polynomial as a vector space is still, at the end of the day, a polynomial. So the set of all of these a values here are the coefficients. And again, we're restricting ourselves to the real. So these are constants. T, like a traditional polynomial, is the variable. And again, this is a real number. And just like we see in algebra pre-calculus, -cal the degree of a polynomial is the highest power of the variable whose coefficient is non-zero. So here, our degree is n, and this is such that n is strictly greater than or equal to zero. Now you might be thinking, well, how come we said that it was non-zero, but we're including zero here, and that leads us to our special case. Right, so you want to make a note here that all, if all of the coefficients of this polynomial are zero, then P is called the zero polynomial. And so even though the degree is not defined here, the zero polynomial is included in P sub n. So let's look at proving that this is, in fact, a vector space. So we need to verify that the polynomials double bar P sub n is, in fact, a vector space. So we let P and Q be polynomials in P sub n, and we're going to let C be any scalar our little hearts desire, and again, we're, restric well, we're restricting ourselves here to real numbers. So, we already know that the zero polynomial exists by definition. So there's two things that we have to confirm here. The first being, we need to show that P sub n is closed under addition. In other words, for all polynomials P of T and Q of T and Pn, we want to show that the sum of these two is also in Pn. So to get started here, we're going to actually work backwards. Let's think about combining or adding P of T plus Q of T. So plugging in what's given, we know P of t is a naught plus a sub 1 times t to the first plus la la la, all the way up to a sub n times t to the n, giving ourselves a little bit more room. We want to do the same thing but for q. So I have b naught plus b sub 1 times t to the first plus all the way up to b sub n times t to the n, the nth term. And looking at this here, we have, or we want to rewrite this as a single polynomial that exists in Pn. And we can do that by grouping our like terms. We've got the constant terms that we can group together. So I'm going to group a naught plus b naught. And I'll go ahead and I'll group the linear terms. So that's going to be plus a sub 1 times t to the first plus b sub 1 times t to the first. And we continue with this grouping method all the way through to the nth term. And we group up the nth terms, giving us a sub n times t to the n 
plus b sub n times t to the n. And in looking at these groups here, we realize everything but the constants has a greatest common factor. So we'll pull that out. Right, so we leave the constants alone. That's still a naught plus b naught. The linear terms, we have t that we can pull out, our greatest common factor. So that's t multiplied by a sub 1 plus b sub 1. And we continue with this factoring until we get to the nth term here. And we pull t to the nth out in front. So that's t to the n multiplied by a sub n plus b sub n. And oops, we did it. We realized that what we've done here is rewrite this as a polynomial p plus q of t, which is a polynomial, so it exists in pn. Woohoo! So we can say, therefore, p of t, or excuse me, p plus q of t, which is equal to the sum of the two polynomials, p of t plus q of t, is in the set of all polynomials, and this is closed under addition. And so because this first axiom is holding true, all other addition, addition axioms also hold true. So the next thing that we want to do is show that this is also closed under scalar multiplication. So we want to show the set of all polynomials p sub n is closed under scalar multiplication. Right, so in other words, for all polynomials p of t in the set of all polynomials and for all scalars c, our goal is to show that c times p of t is also in the set of all polynomials. And just as before, we're going to move backwards here. Let's start by thinking about our polynomial p of t multiplied by our scalar c. So this will be c multiplied by a naught plus a sub 1 times t to the first, and we continue with this process or with our polynomial all the way to the nth term. And by the distributive property, we know that we can distribute our scalar c through to each term. So I have c times a naught plus c times a sub 1 t to the first, do do do, all the way up to c times the nth term a sub n times t to the n. And we can group our, our constants here together. Right? I have c times a naught, which is just a single constant, plus c times a sub 1 times t to the first. And we continue all the way to our nth term. I have c times a sub n multiplied by t to the n. And again, oops, we did it. We have to find a new polynomial here that exists in the set of all polynomials. We have c times p of t, or you can think about this as c times p of t, which is what we wanted, which is in pn, the set of all polynomials. And so therefore, p of p sub n is closed under scalar multiplication. And in confirming this, all other scalar multiplication axioms hold true. So it's closed under addition. We have that the polynomials are closed under scalar multiplication. And therefore, Pn is a vector space.